Hey, it's Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training. Welcome back to another video. And today we're talking about a question that I received from a player who asked me, you know, is it possible to improve your bat speed without lifting weights? And so I thought that was a great question. We're gonna talk about it in today's video. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. All right, so let's talk about it. Can you improve your bat speed without lifting weights? Well, the answer is yes, and I'm gonna share with you a few different ways that you can do that today, but very first thing that I wanna to touch on is you should be lifting weights, all right? As a baseball player, as an athlete, especially if you're looking to really play at an elite level and reach your full potential, there's no excuse for not working out. You absolutely should be working out. You should be lifting weights, all right? Lifting weights is only gonna help you get bigger, faster, stronger, more explosive, which is what it's all about on the baseball field. And especially if we can start incorporating some baseball specific movements uh, that are gonna translate directly to more on-field success, again, there's absolutely no reason why you should not be lifting weights. And I totally understand, you know, a lot of parents are fearful of, well, I don't want my child, I don't want them to stunt their growth. And I totally understand that concern. But you need to understand how stunting of growth growth actually happens and the only way that you're going to stunt your growth is with severe weighted impact to one of your growth plates and so lifting weights properly with you know supervision with a spotter with proper form with not trying to do too much weight with le leaving your ego at the door if you lift the weights the proper way there's no way that you're going to have that severe weighted impact the only way that you're going to have severe weighted impact when you're lifting weights is here's a great example let's say if i had a 45 pound plate and i was going to go re-rack it and i let it out of my hands i dropped it and it fell on my ankle or my shin or something like that that is severe weighted impact. That would definitely have a chance to potentially growth. But again, just using a little bit of progressive overload in the weight room every single week, you know, adding on a little bit more weight as you get bigger, faster, and stronger, that's not gonna stunt your growth. So you need to be lifting weights if you wanna not only boost your bat speed, but just reach your full potential as a baseball player. At the bare minimum, if you're too young for the weight room, at least do body weight exercises, okay? There's so many different plyometric exercises you can do. There's so many different body weight exercises that you can do from the comfort of your own home. So, you know, stop using the excuse of, I'm not gonna work out because I'm not old enough yet or I don't wanna stunt my growth. It's a myth, it's a lie, it's only holding you back. And the last thing I'll say regarding lifting weights is if you're looking to specifically improve your bat speed, you know, and become a, the best baseball player you can possibly be, keep it baseball specific. So focus on compound exercises. Those are gonna give you the most bang for your buck. Compound exercises that incorporate multiple muscle groups, all right? Explosive exercises and, you know, rotational exercises. So compound exercises, um, you know, plyometrics would be explosive movements. And then for rotational movements, medicine balls are great for that. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, you should be lifting weights. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is something that can instantly unlock some bat speed within your swing, and that is fix your swing mechanics, all right? You know, a lot of players are really, really quick to, you know, get in the weight room or get on a bat speed training program or something like that. It's the same with throwing velocity. A lot of guys are quick to get on a velocity program. In reality, the very first thing you should do if you wanna not add bat speed, but literally unlock what's already inside of you in the first place, you need to fix your swing mechanics because what fixing your swing mechanics does is it allows you to swing the baseball bat in the most efficient way possible and so in order to fix your swing mechanics I don't want to get too detailed because I think that a lot of times that confuses hitters more than helps them and so really three areas of focus that I want you to focus on all right number one is launch position, all right? So I don't care how you stand in the batter's box. Every player is gonna have a little bit of a different stance and as long as it doesn't cause mechanical issues, I'm completely fine with it. You wanna stay nice and loose and comfortable and relaxed. No cookie cutter approaches here. Uh, everybody's gonna be a little bit different when it comes to their stance. However, after your stance, right, when you start your baseball swing, you obviously go into a load and then a stride. And when you load and you stride forward, when your front foot hits the ground, this is what known as your launch position and although there's a million and a half different stances out there every launch position should look very very similar okay so focus on launch position your position at the point of contact and extension 
Those are the big areas of focus in terms of fixing your swing mechanics. So launch position, you just wanna make sure your front foot lands slightly open about 45 degrees. You're in an athletic position here. The knob of my baseball bat facing down towards the catcher. My eyes obviously on the baseball and I really want a good lat stretch here, good length with this front arm, okay? So that's an athletic launch position. That's the very first area of emphasis if you freeze frame any you know elite successful hitter at the when their front foot hits the ground at the launch position they're going to look very very similar to this so get into a good launch position after you get into this launch position the swing the rotational component of the swing really starts when your front heel drops and that's when we're going to start making our way to the point of contact so we get to our launch position here our front heel drops that pulls everything else through the zone like this and then when we get to the point of contact we should look something like this right here. All right, so that's the next area of emphasis I really want you to take a look at. What do you look like at the point of contact, all right? Are you, you know, hitting against a firm front side, this front leg, is it, is it firm, is it straight like this? Or are you leaking power because it's bent? So hit against a firm front side. Are you, is your back knee, is your back knee coming forward are your knees pinching together because if this back knee comes forward that means you're getting this back hip fully engaged in your swing all right do you have a good reverse l shape with your back leg at the point of contact a good reverse l are you staying connected do you have a good l shape right here so lots of different things we can talk about in terms of the point of contact but that's the next area of emphasis and then the last thing in terms of fixing your swing mechanics is just making sure you're getting extension. And extension should be the last one you focus on because if you get to that really good launch position and you look good at the point of contact, right, and you do everything efficiently in your swing, extension, once you hit the ball, extension is really just a byproduct of doing everything else correctly in your swing. And so for extension, just focus on driving through the ball, continuing to gain ground with your top hand towards the pitcher, get to that good extended position with your arms straight, but your arms only straighten out, your arms only straighten out well after the point of contact. But that's the first thing, if you wanna boost your bat speed, fix your swing mechanics, really dial them in. All right, so we're lifting weights because we know that's gonna make us bigger, faster, and stronger. We fixed our swing mechanics. We've specifically focused on the launch position, the point of contact, and getting extension. Now it's time for number three, and that is fix your intent. What is intent? Intent is your mentality. What's going on in your head when you're at the plate? And a lot of the times I see players who, uh, you know, step in the batter's box, and it's very, very easy to fall into this trap. It's something that you gotta make sure that you're constantly not doing this but a lot of players step in the batter's box and they think that they're ready to hit but they're truly not really using an aggressive mentality they kind of let it slip to a passive mentality a lot of the times this comes when you're struggling at the plate when you're slumping but if you step in the batter's box with the mentality of all right i'm going to try to see the ball because i haven't been you know squaring it up recently i haven't been seeing it well so i'm going to try to see it and then i'm going to try to decide whether or not to swing if you're trying to decide whether or not to swing you're already beat we just don't have that kind of time that's when you're gonna end up feeling frozen in the batter's box. So instead of trying to step in with a passive mentality of, okay, you know, I'm gonna see if this is a good pitch, see if it's something I can handle and decide whether or not to swing, don't do that. You wanna step in with the mentality of, you know, I am swinging at this pitch. You wanna step in with that aggressive mentality. So it's a subtle difference, but just make sure when you step in the box that you're truly ready to hit. If you're not, it's easy to put your hand up, call time, ask for time, and then step out, regather your thoughts. But you should only be stepping in the box when you're truly uh, using that aggressive mentality and you're ready to hit. You have to remember that hitting is, you know, controlled violence. So we don't wanna be over aggressive and, you know, squeezing the sawdust out of the bat and you know getting really really tense because you know if we're tense that means our muscles are going to be slow loose muscles are relaxed muscles so we want to stay nice and loose and relaxed controlled violence another thing i definitely wanted to touch on when it comes to improving your bat speed without lifting weights is using medicine balls incorporating medicine balls into your training Medicine balls are great because they're one of the best things that you can do in your training to mimic what's actually happening 
in a real game on the baseball field. And it's hard to do that, especially with a lot of sports out there. It's hard to mimic, you know, game specific stuff in your training, but obviously the more game specific we can, you know, be in practice, the better we're gonna be in games. And medicine balls are great for that, okay? Why are medicine balls great for that? Well, everything that we do on the baseball field is explosive, right? Hitting, when we're in the batter's box here, hitting is not this slow, methodical movement, is it? No, I mean, there's slow parts of it. You want your load to be nice and smooth and controlled, but when that front foot gets down and that front heel drops, right? I mean, you are being explosive at the plate. And then when you crush a ball in the gap, you're exploding out of the box. You're exploding when you steal a base. You're exploding when you're pitching. So bottom line, everything on the baseball field that we do is explosive. And then a lot of what we do on the field is also rotational, right? So when we hit, we're rotating. When we throw, we're rotating. And so if we can work on basically overloading those explosive rotational movements in practice, it's only gonna help us even more um, when it comes to being in a real game. And so there's so many different exercises you can do with a medicine ball. I would focus on incorporating medicine ball training into your routine, I don't know, three or four days a week. Uh, that's probably good. Not every single day, but you can do them the majority of the days of the week. And there's so many different exercises you can do. You can do, you know, obviously I recommend because there's so much rotational stuff uh, involved in baseball, like hitting, like we just talked about. Hitting is rotational, throwing is rotational. So I recommend doing some sort of rotational movements with the med ball. So for a right-handed hitter, you know, you turn back to your right side and then throw it, you know, to your left as far as you can throw it. Or if you have a wall, throw it as hard as you can up against that wall but rotational throws are great medicine ball slams are great you know rotational slams where you bring the medicine ball above your head and rotate and slam it to your side so many different great uh, medicine ball exercises out there but if you want to boost your bat speed start using med balls all right, and then the last thing that I wanted to touch on in today's video, this one's huge. This is one of the most scientifically proven ways to boost your bat speed, and that is using a heavy bat and then using a light bat. And so a lot of the times you see hitters in the on-deck circle using donuts or bat weights or whatever, and you know, really there's been studies that prove that doing that right before you hit sometimes can actually slow down your bat speed a little bit, but it certainly is not gonna speed it up a ton if you use a donut just in the on-deck circle. However, it might be, you know, if it's something you, you like to use that's totally fine because it might have something to do with your mentality right it feels like you're swinging the bat quicker but I'm not talking about just expecting something to happen overnight like this this heavy bat light bat technique or method of training this is not something that's going to provide immediate overnight results but it is something that's going to really really provide significant results in the long term like I said this method is one of the most scientifically studied and proven ways to boost your bat speed what it is all right is every single hitter out there is gonna have obviously your game bat, your normal bat, right? For youth players, high school, college, it's gonna be an aluminum bat or a composite bat, whatever the case may be. But you're gonna have your normal size and weight bat. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna find a baseball bat that's a little bit lighter than that and a bat that's a little bit heavier than that. And a mistake that players make is they, they, they pick a bat that's like double the weight or something that they can barely, barely swing or something that's light as a feather. You don't want that. You want a bat that's a little bit lighter and a bat that's a little bit heavier. And what that's gonna do, you're gonna take swings, whether it's just dry swings, that's a great way to do it. You can do soft toss, front toss, BP, a combination of all of them. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna take, you know, swings with your normal baseball bat, dry swings off the tee, whatever. Then you're gonna drop down to that light baseball bat, take swings there. Then you're gonna pick up to that heavy bat. And this isn't something that's gonna just happen overnight, but if you continue to work on this over the course of time, you're gonna see drastic improvements. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, smash that like button for me. I'd really appreciate that. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already because we're coming out with new baseball videos every single week and I know you're not gonna to wanna to miss them, so hit that subscribe button. And if you want a free bat speed workout, all you have to do is just click on the very first link in that first pinned comment. I'll leave the link for you there. And that's a free bat speed workout that I created custom for you, so I really think you're gonna enjoy that as well. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.